Here is what my seating chart program looks like when it runs. I'm going to give you actually a lot of this code here. I'm going to give you the code that actually creates the seating chart. This is just a table with some pictures and then names underneath it. And that's all of this code right here. This is just HTML stuff. I made a couple of buttons. Uh, on click, it's going to uh, run, well, this first button is going to run something which will seat students randomly. And if I click this, yeah. So you're gonna have to write this method. Now this method is going to randomly shuffle names in an array. And we'll take a look at the array in just a moment. And then there is seat, uh, seat alphabetically where I seat each student alphabetically. Now, actually I wrote this one for you too. The other method that you're gonna have to write, or function rather, the, you're gonna write two functions. The first one, as I said, was random seats. And the second function that you're writing is called move your seat. And that gets run as you can see every time you click on a picture. So if I click on Anne there, I can swap her with any student I choose. Maybe I'll swap her with position 0, 1, 2, and see what happens. So there we go. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Or maybe I'll click on Parker there and I'll swap him. The default is 0. I'll swap him with Ashley. And there you go. I know what you're thinking. All my students look like cartoon characters. Well, you know, what are you going to do? Anyway, so those are the two functions that you're going to write. Uh, move your seat. And of course, that gets run anytime you click on a picture. And of course, that's just swapping items in an array. And the other one, as I said before, was random seats. And that's going to do a shuffle. Now, let me just scroll down a little bit right here. And you can see that I've declared an array of students. Now, these are the names of students. Conveniently, the names of the pictures of students are the same as the names of the students. So for example, Morgan, the picture Morgan, that's named Morgan, goes with the name Morgan. I named the pictures that way. It just made it easier for me to put them in the table, but that's not even really a concern of yours. You're just gonna be, this is gonna be very simple. Oh, I even wrote the display seats function for you, so you don't even have to do that. You're at, and the seat alphabetically, because that's an easy one. You can just sort an array by using the dot sort method. And there you go. And by the way, after I after I sorted, I redisplay the seat. So like if I hit seat alphabetically, they're seated alphabetically, and then I call the function display seats, and you're going to have to do that as well. So the next two functions I'm not going to show you because you are going to write them. So this is the move your seat. And what's getting passed to this is the current seat. So when I run it, for example, on Alex there, uh, the position of Alex, which is one, is actually getting passed. So X is one, and maybe I'll swap him with Aiden. Uh, there you go. And you have to also write the function which, um, which will take this array students and shuffle it randomly. And you know how to shuffle items in an array. Now, one other thing, and I haven't perhaps mentioned this before, I've declared my array outside of the functions. That means, it, that means it's a global variable. It means that this, uh, this variable can be used by any function. Now, perhaps you've used that before, but I don't know if I've officially mentioned that or not. So when you make a variable inside of a function, you can only use it inside of a function. But here I've declared it var students outside of all of the functions, it can be used inside every single function. All right, well, that's all there is to it. You just have two functions to write. So thanks so much for watching.